Hello there, welcome to this episode of Bernadette TV. And today we're talking about time. Why am I about talking about time? TikTok. Because all of us, it doesn't matter who we are in the world, we all have a clock ticking. None of us actually know how much time we have left on the planet. And um, I'm sorry if it sounds like that's a really morbid note, but I really just want to get your attention that the most precious resource we have is time. Because let's face it, we can all make more money, but none of us. It doesn't matter whether you're Oprah or Richard Branson or President of the United States. None of us can buy more time. None of us can manufacture more time. So it's really, really important that we make sure that our time is going in the directions that are most aligned with who we want to be. And if you are in a small business, if you're running a small business like I do, then the decisions about how you, that you make about how you spend your time And also, if you have a team about how your team is spending those time, that's crucial because you're either putting your time into things that are moving you forward and enhancing the results you want and advancing you towards those results, or you're putting your time into things that are not. And so it's really important to learn to how to evaluate your time. So there is a tool that I want to refer to you on this one. It is uh, called Lifecycle. And I love Lifecycle because... What Lifecycle enables me to do is track my time and it does it automatically. So how Lifecycle works, it's a free app that you can download to your phone and it will basically um, track you by location. So Lifecycle, for example, it recognizes when I'm, I'm at my gym and assumes quite rightly that when I'm at the gym, I am actually working out. Um, it equally recognizes when I'm taking my boys on the school run. It knows when I'm in the car. And Lifecycle, using Lifecycle really opened my eyes to where time was, was leaking out in my life. And it helped me realize where I didn't realize, for example, that I was spending four or five hours in my car a week because I work from home. I have no commute. My children's school is less than half a mile from our house. And so it was quite an eye opener for me to realize I was spending four or five hours in the car every week. But recognizing that helped me to make a new decision. Now, did I want to start walking my children to school and uh, then use that time for exercise so that made my school run longer, but I got more payoff for that time? Or did I want to start to use Audible in my car or use that time for listening to podcasts? So it helped me to squeeze more juice, if you like, out of where my time was going. So I highly, highly, highly recommend uh, Lifecycle as a tool to help you manage your time and track your time. Now, Coming back to being in business, the business that you currently have is a reflection of your past decisions. What it came back down to in business is you're either putting your time and investing your time and your money and energy into things that are moving your business forward or you're not. And there's no shame or blame here. This isn't about getting all judgmental or, you know, gnashing your teeth or wringing out your hands or anything like that. It's about taking that feedback and making a better decision. So what I want to do is to share with you some questions that you can ask yourself about where your time is going. Again, not to judge you or to shame you or to blame you or to make you feel bad about where your time is going, but really to support you in just making better decisions. This is about feedback and then, you know, asking yourself, okay, is this getting me what I want? And if not, course correcting. So let's talk about the, the six questions. So the first thing is to ask yourself, what are the things that you do are doing that is currently contributing to your life and your business? So I'll invite you to make a list. So one of the things that I love to do in my business is actually look at my current results. And for example, what is currently producing results in terms of profit in the business and then track back. And it was through doing this exercise that I recognized that um, in my business, one thing that works really well is speaking at live events. And I was able to see of the current income and stuff that's coming into my business, how much of that was dependent upon me speaking at live events. And so recognizing that and go to go, okay, well, if I want more of these results, I need to find more opportunities to speak to live audiences, you know, where the, the people that I want to are hanging out. Now, That is an example of like looking at results and using it to track back to identify what was a great decision I made in the past 
And now how can I use that information to make a better decision in the present to lead me to more of the future I want? So that's on the business side. But equally, you want to look at your personal life as well. So a mentor of mine, a fantastic piece of advice that I had is that when you are in downtime, you want that to be much about you know, recovery and filling your cup. So are you spending time with people that, um, that are enhancing your life? Uh, is, your, uh, is your lifetime, is it going on things that are improving your life overall? Are you spending enough time you know, getting exercise? It doesn't mean that you have to be out pumping iron. It could be as simple as a simple walk. Are you spending your time you know, in ways that are aligned with your highest value. So, you know, are you actually spending quality time with your loved ones and family? Or is that time with them something that you're just getting through to cross off another day? Again, no judgment here, just an opportunity to get very real and honest with yourself about whether this is currently working for you. So that's question number one. Question number two, and this is much more on the business side, is what are the things that you're currently doing that are making you money? And to get really honest about that. So I've been coaching people in business for a long time. And it is amazing to me how much people can be in denial or how much people can have made up a story. And the one thing I love about numbers is they do not lie. So you did something, it was profitable or it wasn't. It made you money or it didn't. Maybe it made you less money that you hoped for, but it still made money. And maybe that can be turned into something that will make you more money if you identify the one piece that is working and you leverage that, you scale that. What are the things that bring you and your family joy? Like my children, we love going to the swimming pool. We love water parks. There's just something about it. We just all love the element of water. And if I think back to the things that are the, um, the, the days out that we've enjoyed most, there's always been a pool or more likely a water slide. So guess how I've used this. Can you imagine where our ne next vacation is? We're actually going to a hotel that has a water park because that's basically something that we've really enjoyed in the past. So why not 10 times it? Why not 14 times it on our next two week holiday? What are the things that are wasting time? And again, this can really come up in business, especially in a small business, especially if you're just getting started. It is amazing how you can have your time go into things that just don't produce results. And again, I'm not saying that to shame or blame or anything like that. It's just an opportunity to get honest with yourself. If you are doing something and you're putting a lot of time or effort into something and, you know, I would never say expect interim results, but if like six months into this thing, a year into this thing, it currently isn't producing enough for you to even earn an income from, you need to get real and you need to ask yourself, okay, what isn't working here? What do I need to shift? Maybe it is time to, you know, put this to one side. That's very painful. You know, if this is a passion project for you and it's something that you want to turn into something that can make a full-time income for you, but maybe it's just at this time, the way that it's currently doing, it's not working. And so it might need me that you need to change it. You need to abandon it altogether. What are the things that you can hand off? So something that's really helped me in my business is at a very early stage, I, when my children were very young, I realized it really didn't matter who washed the floors in my house. It really didn't matter who did the laundry. It really didn't matter who made the beds, but it did matter who read my children a story at night, who tucked them in and kissed them goodnight. That was down to me. I wanted to do that. That was not something I wanted to delegate. But there was so much else in my life that I could delegate. So I was able to focus on that thing. Now, this could be a very long video <laughs> if I start talking to the mums because there's so much, you know, as mums that we want to take on, that we end up doing. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you are the best person to do it. And I actually think for mums investing, and I do call it investing, I looked at the domestic help that I paid for to help with my children and to help with the running of my house. I saw that as a business investment years ago. I actually saw this is a cost of me being in business. If I pay for this help over here to keep my house clean and tidy and running smoothly and in a well-ordered machine, the payoff so that I can fully focus in my business and show up to serve my clients in the highest way and be more creative, 
that's going to pay dividends. And I'm so glad that I made that investment years ago. So again, there's also things inside of my business that I'm the not I'm not the best person to do. I did not upload this video. <laughs> my team have learned not to let me do stuff like that because I'm dangerous. I find it very hard to follow a system. I'm great at creating systems. I don't like following them. So, you know, there's certain things in my business that I don't do that there's, we all know that I, I'm not the best person to do. And I wouldn't say I've handed off everything that I could. I'm definitely still a work in progress, but you've got to start somewhere. So identify what are things that absolutely could be handed off immediately. And the final thing is like, what are the things that you need to stop doing? So, okay, probably not going to feel proud about sharing this, but yes, I did used to pay Candy Crush. And then I just realized, okay, this is just taking up my time. You know, I could use the time, even if I'm using, playing Candy Crush while I'm on a bus or waiting for something, I could be using that time better, even if I'm just sitting quietly and reflecting on my thoughts. So there are things that you might need to stop doing altogether. So those are the six questions that we have. I'm just looking at down. I thought that was seven, but it's just six. The six questions... And I hope these have helped you to make better decisions about where a really precious resource that you have um, is about how you're using it. So thank you for the time that you invested watching this video. And I hope with what I shared with you, I've multiplied your return on your investment of time. And I would love to see your comments about how this video has helped you or how you'll be using the questions in this video. And I look forward to seeing you on a future episode of Bernadette TV. Hello, you, yes you, yes you, if you like my mummy's videos, my mummy is Bernadette Doyle by the way, you need to hit the subscribe button or the like button, it would be very appreciated.